Sliding barn door hardware is really popular in furniture right now, but it can be kind of expensive to purchase. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to make barn door hardware out of common materials you can find at most hardware stores. It starts with a quarter inch hex head bolt, a couple of quarter inch washers, and then this uh, ball bearing pulley that it's the one thing that I couldn't find at the hardware store, but it's easily purchased on an online store, or I got this one through McMaster Car. Uh, another readily available piece of hardware is this quarter inch jam nut. If you don't know what a jam nut is, it's pretty much the same thing as a hex head nut, regular size, but it's about half as thick. If you can find a jelly or preserve nut, that would probably do as well. Next, you'll need a length of weldable steel. This is 1 8 inch thick by 1 inch wide, and that's another thing that you should be able to find at any box store or hardware store. You'll take this steel, and then you'll bend that into the the hook of the hardware. Not only will I need to bend the steel, but I also will need to drill holes in it and add bull noses on both ends of it just to dress it up a little bit. To do that, I'm going to cut the bull nose on one end first. That'll end up being the back part. And because I have to do a lot of um, cuts on all my pieces of hardware, I made a template with a bull nose on it so I can easily trace that for each one. With that marked, I'm ready to cut it to shape. Get it clamped in the vise here. Grab my hacksaw and we'll just cut it to rough shape the best we can. I'm going to flip it over and come at it from the other side. I'm only going to get so close with the, to the shape with the hacksaw, so now I'm going to come in with the file and get it cleaned up. There we go. That's pretty good. I can come back at the end and clean up the burrs or any rough spots with the sandpaper, but for now I can get to the bending. The key to this barn door hardware is getting a consistent and repeatable bend on the hook. So I've made a bending jig that's pretty simple. It starts with a piece of plywood with a dado cut in the middle, and that dado matches the thickness and width of my uh, bar stock. Then I've added a scrap piece of wood here. That's going to add as a stop for my hook. It's going to set the length here on the back side. Next, I've made another uh, uh, part here that's got uh, a round over on the back side and it's a half inch plywood. That's going to set the radius of my hook, as you can see here. Now I can take these two parts, I'll sandwich them together here. I'm just going to add a couple screws kind of hold them in position as I get the clamps on. Now I can clamp this to my workbench. There's a few tips you might want to know before you start bending. First of all, I've left the stock extra long. That way I have a little bit more leverage when I'm going to bend it. Uh, the other thing is I've done a little sanding and cleanup work of the steel. Now while it's flat, it's a little bit easier to do um, before it's bent. And then uh, you might notice that the steel you have is convex on one side and concave on the other. I want to have that concave side on the inside of the hook. So when I go to insert it, that side's going to be up. It might be a little tight as you're putting it in, so you want to make sure it engages that stop so you know you have it all the way in. And then, um, here, get on this side so I can get underneath it. And you want it to bend right at that plywood. Bring it all the way around. 
And then you might want to just put a clamp on that steel to get it bent the last little bit so that it's flat against that plywood. And then you can release the clamp. Pull that out. Kind of have to wiggle a little, little bit. But there you can see we have the bend in the steel ready to cut it to length and drill the holes. To cut the bull nose at the other end, just like before, I'm going to use the hacksaw to cut it to rough shape, starting on one side, then I'll flip it over and cut it from the other side till I'm all the way through. Then I'll clamp the hook into the vise and finish shaping with the file. To drill the holes in the hardware, I've mounted the hook back in my bending jig to help hold it and back up the cuts. On the top portion of the hardware, keep in mind you are drilling through both portions of the hook, front and back. It helps to use a light oil or cutting fluid for easier drilling and to clear chips. Be mindful that the metal may get hot as you're drilling so be cautious when touching it. If you get the urge to brush the metal chips away with your hand, here's a tip, don't do that. Don't ask how I know. Now with the hook formed and the holes drilled, we're ready to assemble. So it just starts with the, the hex bolt here. We'll thread that in through the front. Then we'll add a washer. Next, the pulley. And I'm just using the bolt to kind of catch everything here. It's a lot easier to assemble this with nobody watching. So we'll add the last washer. that in there. Use a screwdriver to kind of get it centered. Pop the bolt through. I'm going to add the jam nut on the back to hold everything in place. And we have the roller hook complete. Now that's just going to ride on a metal rail on the cabinet. That metal rail is just another piece of long bar stock and that's going to get bolted to your cabinet and held out with a nylon spacer. So with some common hardware and a little sweat, you'll have beautiful sliding barn doors in no time.